Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this presentation. Today, uh, my colleague Elvira Castillo, from, coordinator of Education USA Mexico, and I will be moderating the session. But we have three great presenters. Alexandra Gaxiola from Education USA uh, in Monterrey, uh, Mabel Martinez, Education USA Advisor in Guadalajara, and Yandy Reynoso, Education USA Advisor in Mexico City. We're going to start by talking about what Education USA is. And uh, for those uh, of you who don't know us, uh, who are joining us for the first time, we, we usually start our presentations with information on our network. And I'm gonna talk about it for, for a moment. Education USA is a global network of advising centers from the US Department of State. We are more than 430 advising centers in more than 175 countries around the world. We are the official source of information on US higher education. In this region, the North, North America, Central America, and the Caribbean region, we are 49 advising centers. We offer free access to introductory information on US study. We work with students, higher education institutions, governments, and NGOs. And we offer unbiased, accurate, comprehensive information about the full range of accredited US higher education institutions. Now I'm going to mention what services we offer. Um, we offer free advice and services. Free, okay, so take advantage of this. In center, for example, we offer info sessions, one on one sessions, workshops, official materials, and guides for studying in the United States. We also conduct outreach. We visit universities, higher education institutions in our countries. Um, and also high schools. We offer workshops and we participate at mobility fairs. Currently, we are offering a virtual program and we offer one-on-one -on -one virtual sessions, webinars, fairs, and seminars. Before we start our presentation, we would like to know where you are coming from, where you are joining us from. Please answer the poll. Well, I can see that there is a lot of people from Central America. Uh, we also have people from North America and we have people from other countries. That's good to know. Yes. All right, thank you very much for answering the poll and let's start with our presentation. Great. Thank you. Thank you everyone for this great opportunity um, of being here and presenting about uh, financial opportunities for graduate programs. So we will start this presentation by talking about the patterns and trends in funding for graduate programs in the US. Um, we have been learning throughout the years that um, there are um, some um, patterns that these um, institutions in general in the US they follow. Uh, as we see in screen, uh, there's more funding available for those um, PhD programs in comparison to the programs that uh, are for master's degrees. Uh, we also been seeing a trending in the different institutions in the US. Uh, the truth is that the institutions that have a research uh, in a doctoral degrees uh, in the universities, they also have more funding available for student for students. Sorry, compared to those institutions that only have uh, master programs. Also, um, we have seen the academic programs, uh, the ones that um, focus on. Um, teaching and research, they also um, have more opportunities of, uh, of financial aid compared to the professional programs. For example, as we can see on screen, some examples of professional programs are uh, the MBAs or law, law programs. Next slide, please. Also, um, 
funding it depends on this the field of study that you're interested uh, for example engineering computer science and math so that's um, the stem fields they also count always with more um, opportunities of financial aid compared to any other um, field of study um, as you can see the percentages are are higher than any other uh, field of study that it's humanities also business law and other professions so this is something that uh, we wanted to start a presentation with uh, some patterns and trends that you should keep in mind when looking for different options. Next slide. Hi, uh, welcome everyone and thank you again for joining us today. Um, now that you have learned a little bit about the trends um, regarding the financial aid for graduate students, I would like to discuss with you why it's important that you start planning as early as possible. As you may remember for other sessions, uh, you need to start looking for your program of interest at least 12 to 18 months uh, prior to the academic year in which you would like to attend. Well, uh, we recommend the same amount of, of time to start your financial planning, especially if you want to receive funding from U.S. universities. Um, Applications for financial aid usually go um, together with application for admissions. So um, you need to start looking ahead for these opportunities. Take into consideration also that there will be other type of financial aid or scholarship that will allow you apply after you have been accepted. But um, it is recommended that you also know what um, Fi what types of financial aid will be available uh, once that you are going to submit your um, application, your admission application. Um, we will discuss, um, my colleague Ale will dis Alex will discuss um, a little bit later the different types of financial aid that you can get, but um, I would like to uh, focus on three main topics here. Um, why it's important that you start access your personal fund, funds? Um, that is because it will, you will start evaluating how much funding you or if anyone is going to help you, your family, for example, how much money they can provide for your education. So if you are planning to apply for financial aid, uh, know that general financial aid amounts are based on the difference between university costs and what your family uh, or you can afford. So understand that most um, scholarships or other types of financial aid might cover only part of your total education and leave its cost. And also, they usually are not available um, for first international students. Okay? Um, so, Basically, that is the first point why it is important to start planning as early as possible. Another point is that you need to make a budget. So uh, studying in the United States, a graduate program is more, uh, is more than just uh, paying tuition. You have to also consider fees, cost of living, and other uh, hidden expenses, probably books and supplies, uh, your personal uh, expenses or recreations if you're thinking of traveling. So planning ahead will help you to set a budget for all this time of cost, included if you are thinking of applying uh, all the initial, initial expenses that you might incur. Uh, uh, of, uh, for example, um, if you are going to take uh, the GRE, uh, the TOEFL, if you have to pay um, to translate your documents. So if you, as clear as you have um, the information about what will be your real budget, this will help you um, to plan better um, what are you looking for, what type of financial aid are you looking for. And last, um, regarding the personal profile, uh, as you are looking for financial aid, you will realize that some, uh, some or most of the financial aid types that students uh, will require, 
they ask for certain profile in the students. So besides evaluating the university profile, uh, the cost and the financial opportunities, you also need to evaluate yourselves. Uh, are you a good candidate for the type of financial aid um, that the university is available? Or if not, what can you do to improve your profile to be able to apply for that um, special uh, opportunity or financial aid opportunity? Um, so please take that in mind. Um, and we're moving forward to know what are the types of financial aid available for graduate students. Okay, thank you, Mabel. Thank you, everyone who is right now joining us. Um, well, we also need to research for some special opportunities that um, they're going to vary a lot according to where you're from. So you should reach out to your uh, nearest Education USA Advising Center because the advisors are going to know about these local scholarship opportunity opportunities that are there for you um, it, either from the US government or also uh, from your own government so um, we have uh, an example here we have the opportunity funds program which it's it is present in over 50 countries and this is a scholarship that covers all of the costs associated with the application process. So such, just as um, I mentioned before, if you need to translate some documents or if you need to um, send all of these papers, also if you need some test prep for uh, the standardized exams, these uh, costs are covered by these, by these scholarships. So it's, it's, not an, a scholar, it's not a scholarship, for uh, tuition costs, but for the whole application process. This scholarship is available to students in Nicaragua, Guatemala, Honduras, Costa Rica, um, Mexico, and I think uh, El Salvador as well. Um, please let me know if I forgot another country. Um, but yes, so we have this amazing opportunity for these uh, talented students who cannot afford to, to start their own application to universities in the United States. Um, we also have uh, the Fulbright program in over 160 countries. And this scholarship is a very competitive one, but this one is to cover um, tuition costs um, as well as maybe a stipend or it could, it could also cover um, your student visa process and also well it would depend uh, in each country but of course we recommend you to, to reach out to your local Education USA advisor to find out more about these types of opportunities. Next slide please. Um, we also have um, in-state tuition but this topic, um, Mabel is going to explain a little bit more about this later on. But we also have application fee waivers available to students who might not have the, the means to, to pay for these. Also, um, there are several types of scholarships. One of them is merit-based, which uh, is a, it, it's um, mostly for students that are um, um, have high academic credentials, but it could be also to talented students um, in the fields of music, maybe. Um, and we also have from the US institutions, a type of um, financial opportunity, which is um, fellowships. And these would be um, a scholarship, but these tend to be very competitive. And we also have assistantships, which I'm going to explain a little bit more in detail. Uh, next, next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so when it comes to assistantships, we have three main types of three main types of assistantships. We have the teaching assistantship, which is mostly awarded by the department. Um, this is advice to those who've already who already have some teaching experience. You must have a strong spoken English. Um, level and it can be in several departments. We also 
to have um, a research uh, assistantship, which is mostly awarded by professors, and it would contribute to your thesis research. And lastly, we have the graduate assistantship, which uh, could be maybe a combination or it could be more administrative. You could be working at a library or you, you could be helping a professor um, to only be grading exams or grading um, papers. But all of these uh, assistantships, um, they tend to be competitive. They, they sometimes require an interview. So you really have to also do your research according to your um, university program if these assistantships are available. The, the great benefit of these assistantships is that you are working uh, for the university, but at the same time, um, maybe they are covering uh, the full cost of tuition and they're also giving you a stipend. So this is, well, it, it would also vary a lot according to, um, to each institution, but many times for, um, for uh, graduate students, they, they have this possibility of getting their whole studies uh, fully fun funded. Now, when it comes to the professor, as is mentioned here in this slide, the, the professor is going to be very important during all of the, this, this process. So, because uh, professors are the ones who manage the teaching and the research assistantships. So many times uh, the professor is going to decide to which students uh, they're going to choose it because these are these students are the ones that are going to be working with them. So before even you consider applying to any program, any graduate program, either a master's or a, or a PhD, you, um, you need to communicate with the professors. You first need to do a, a very thorough research about what they are doing right now, what, what, what have been their latest articles, maybe about the, the subject that you're interested in, and also if it aligns with what you want to do, if it, ali if it aligns with your own academic and, prof and professional goals. So if these uh, align with the ones from the professor, then it would be a good match and it would be um, most it would you would be uh, most likely to get awarded with these with these kinds of assistantships so you have to learn about them research through the school website or also um, google scholar is a great resource for you to research about these uh, professors so you need to write to them, write them emails before you even consider applying to get the, the communication going. So that also, uh, this is also important that, that they know if you have any research experience um, or what, what are your, your, next ex, your next steps or what are your interests um, after you graduate. So uh, it's important that even before you apply, they they know you as it says there so they sh they shouldn't be uh, reading your name um, the first time in your application they should already know about you next slide please okay i think um, this goes yep and um now that you have a Alex has uh, explained a little bit about the different types of financial aid. I would like to mention some tips to reduce uh, cost. Um, so one of the great things to study in the United States is that either you can go to a private school or a, a public school. So in the case of uh, private schools, you will find more um, opportunities of financial aid available. However, the cost that you have to cover uh, regarding your um, university program will be higher. Uh, compared with the public universities that scholarships or financial aid will be, will be also available, but it will be fewer and they will be more competitive. So you have to do your research and start looking for what is um, more convenient with you and your pocket. Um, 
other way that you can uh, try to reduce costs are um, by selecting universities in the United States which uh, are located in the lower or lowest cost of living. For example, it's not the same um, the living cost of Oklahoma, which um, the minimum wage goes around seven seven dollars per hour, seven twenty five, I think, per hour. Uh, compare, for example, with um, uh, New York, that probably is around fifteen dollars uh, per hour. Of course, if you are working, you're gonna you're gonna make more money in New York, but um, the cost of living will be higher. And another great thing that you can do is um, looking for state tuitions. Um, to, to do this, there are some agreements between universities, either your home, um, your home university or uh, in your country, there, there are some agreements that might give you the benefit of paying in-state tuition uh, instead of auto tuition. If you pay in-state tuition, you will reduce costs automatically. And um, my best advice here is that uh, you can, you approach to your closest Education USA Advising Center because the, the advisor can help you distinguish um, yourself, which are these agreements, uh, if there are agreements available, if there are other types of um, financial aid available for you according to your profile, your country, and um, your type of studies. Thank you, thanks Mabel. Um, so let's step, uh, let's take a step back a little bit um, to think about uh, the first step uh, to starting in the United States, uh, which is, as you can see in screen, uh, researching your options to find a university that, that best uh, fits your needs. Uh, you shouldn't try to match yourself to the school, uh, but rather find the school that matches you and your priorities uh, and also your long-term goals. So um, be sure to allow, allow yourself um, enough time to conduct uh, research about, you know, potential graduate schools and also programs. So we will recommend you to begin your search at least uh, 12 to 18 months prior to the academic year in which you hope to enroll in the U.S. Uh, at a U.S. institution. Um, so we have been talking uh, in this presentation about the two main graduate degrees in the, in the U.S. Uh, you know, the, those are the master degrees and also doctoral degrees. So both degrees, um, they involve a combination of research and different coursework. Um, when, so when searching for a graduate program in the U.S., first consider uh, your priorities to help locate a program that is the best fit for you. Um, you know, we, we know that these priorities may change maybe over the time, uh, but I know that they will help you um, guide your program research. Uh, so that's why we want to share with you this uh, worksheet that would help also uh, to better define your financial plan. So next slide, please. Uh, you can find this education, this um, worksheet at the Education USA website, but we will also share it with you uh, on the chat box. Uh, so, for example, you can start by asking yourself, uh, why do I want to study in the U.S.? What are my short-term and long-term goals? Uh, am I looking for a master's or doctoral program, uh, a professional degree? Am I uh, interested in a professional certificate? So, um, I want to focus now on the financial aid portion of this document. Uh, next slide. Uh, yes. Um, of this document um, because there are important things that first you need to figure out um, and, and think about uh, your, your own funding resources. Think about questions like, how will I pay for my graduate program in the U.S.? Uh, will I need to request financial aid? Next slide, please. 
so as you can see in this um, in this worksheet that I recommend you to download and also locate at, at, at our website, um, it is important uh, to also evaluate your financial contribution. Um, these can come directly from your family um, or your personal resources. Um, there are a few other uh, questions that you should consider when researching your options in terms of financial aid. Um, some of the questions that you can see on, on this worksheet um, uh, might include, does this institution that I'm interested in offer financial aid for international students? Uh, will I qualify for an assistantship, for a fellowship? Um, are there on-campus employment opportunities available for international students for my field of study? Um, also, should I consider maybe to find a loan from my home country? So it is important to think about uh, all these opportunities and scholarships to the U.S. government and, and also private sponsors like organizations and, and different corporations available for international students. Uh, I will also recommend to learn about the different sources of financial aid in your home country. Each country is different, works different. Uh, for example, like Alex just mentioned about the Opportunity Funds program that it's available in most of the countries represented in a region. Uh, and also uh, do a little bit more research about the Fulbright Scholarship opportunities. Um, so my, my recommendation when looking at this um, worksheet uh, next slide. Yeah. Um, when looking at this, this um, worksheet, it's to make sure to answer this question with as much as information as possible. This worksheet uh, will act as a guide when working also with your uh, Education USA advisor. So please, uh, I will recommend again, take the time to review this document and to be honest about in your own um, your own, um, um, sorry, I forgot, your own financial aid um, um, experience and, and your financial aid needs. Next slide. Yeah, and also this worksheet, sorry. Um, it, it, it's, as you can see, it's not only about a financial aid uh, need. Uh, you, can, you can see that uh, it will help you to better uh, do a better search on the different opportunities and programs for graduate studies in the U.S. Next slide, thanks. Okay, so now we're going to look at some search engines that are going to be very useful uh, during this whole process. First of all, we have the Education USA uh, official website. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? Okay, so here we have a database of scholarship opportunities within U.S. institutions. Here, as you can see, you can choose your filters according to the degree uh, that, that you're going for. So, for example, we have master's, doctorate, or postdoctorate, and we can also even choose by state and um, by nationality. So many times there are many institutional scholarships that are only focused for students from a particular country or a region. So this database helps us um, kind of make this filter to, to see if we are eligible for some opportunities. Can you go to the next one, please? Here we have uh, even uh, um, two, two examples. We have one specifically for doctorate and another one for masters. So you can see that they have the deadlines to apply to, to these opportunities, but of course you, you should uh, click on the, on the websites to find out more details about the requirements. Maybe you need to, to send uh, an additional essay or, you need to um, do uh, another test or, well, it would all depend on the, on the uh, university. And of course, um, we advise you to go directly to the main university website just to check that it's up to date, everything. 
but of course since it's uh, the Education USA website it should be um, uh, obviously up to date so just you need to to go to for, uh, for further information next one please uh, we also have other examples for example this one uh, international education financial aid can you go next and here we can also click um, we can choose by nationality and also uh, by field of study and we can choose um, if we are studying accounting or maybe public policy and see if there are some opportunities for those particular areas. Next one, please. Uh, here we have, I don't know if you are able to, to watch it, but um, we have, for example, in the, where in, in the box you can say, you can see that it's um, architecture and design or biology, etc. So you can see that these are categorized by field and it has a description and we can see if maybe um, we are eligible for those opportunities as well. Uh, next one, please. Um, well, this is just another example. Here we have uh, the criteria, we have the submission deadline, we have the award amount, which is, I think, for $2,000. Um, so we recommend you to take a look at all of the information that is on this website, but also to check directly with the university and maybe also ask your Education USA advisor. Next one, please. Uh, we have this uh, website and next one. <laughs> Here we have uh, uh, an example of the Gates Millennium Scholars, which is um, for any area of study, but you should be always re very careful because, for example, here it says that it's for undergrads, but also for graduate students. So maybe if you read this very, very fast, you would do the mistake of thinking that it's only for undergraduate students. But no, it's also for graduate students who are studying science, public health, computer science, education, library science, or mathematics. So this is uh, for, um, yes, it is an award of over $12,000. So these opportunities, of course, they're not going to knock on your door. You should be the one doing the research. And obviously, uh, as I always say, it does go to your Education USA advisor to make sure that this is an opportunity that you can uh, apply to. Next one, please. And Peterson's, um, this one is uh, a particular favorite of mine. Uh, next one. I think it's a very easy website. Can you go to the next one? Thank you. Okay, so here we can um, search by scholarship or by grants, by fellowships, and also even you can even type in the, the name of the institution that you're interested in so that you can uh, take a look and see if there are some um, scholarships available in, in that particular institution that you're interested. Uh, next one, please. And I think this is the last one, maybe. Um, next one. So this is very similar to another one that we showed you before, but here you can also um, choose by, by nationality, but what, what, what do you want to study and um, where you want to study. So in this case, well, it's in the United States and you can uh, compare all of these opportunities. Next one, please. Here we have, um, this is a specific example from um, the Howard Hines Social and Public Policy Fellowship. And this one is for the University of Pittsburgh only. So uh, this one is to assist Latin Americans that are interested in social and public policy. Okay, so if you, as you can see, uh, this one would be only for this university. So uh, um, again, just make sure that maybe this website is up to date 
and check that you have all the necessary, um, well, the profile to apply to, to this opportunity. Uh, next one, please. And well, we also have this resource uh, that is from Education USA Mexico City, but um, this is, uh, these are opportunities that um, students from all of the region are eligible to apply. These are not uh, opportunities only for Mexicans. These are for all uh, Latin American students, I think. So we have, for example, the Amelia Earhart Fellowship that is uh, only for women. But we also have from the Organization of American States, which is the Rowe Fund, um, from, from the World Bank. Uh, so we, uh, as you can see, these are good resources that you can check. It's in Spanish, so maybe um, those of you who, who do not speak Spanish, um, you can uh, maybe just translate these titles, but the rest of the information, well, it's um, in English. So these are great opportunities. Just uh, take a look at them and maybe see if, if some of them are a good fit for what you're looking for. Next one, please. Mabel, uh, I'll give the word to you. Thank you. And now um, to sum up a little bit of, of what we have been talking. Um, let me see. I'm going to share with you um, a spreadsheet that we, at least I use a lot with my advices. Um, this is just a, a spreadsheet that you can have for your reference. It can be modified according to your need. But the objective of having this um, tool is uh, for you to make an informed and conscious decision about the cost that you will incur when applying to a graduate program in the United States. So, um, as you can see here, there are um, the program of studies, we usually um, advise that you apply to one to four or five universities um, because all of them are going to request more or less the same information or the uh, same documentation, right? So um, then we have um, a space for the financial aid type. Uh, I like to divide be because it's easier to divide it in three three types. The ones that will um, on the blue, you can see the financial aid provided by the U.S. institutions, all the scholarships that we have been talking about, assistantships, um, uh, scholarships, merit-based scholarships, the fellowships that can be used found for uh, PhD students, etc. Um, I also like. After I, I um, state all the scholarships or the financial aid available, uh, depending or your um, granted by your local government or your um, local institutions, that will be uh, case by case depending um, where uh, where are you from. For example, Alex mentioned uh, a few Fulbright and Opportunity Funds, and uh, after the self-funding, so your savings, how much money will you be able to um, use to cover your expenses? So um, here at the top, we have the tuition and fees, and then we also have the student leave expenses, because of course, once you have been accepted, you will, you will be living in another country, and that will mean that you have to incur in other type of expenses. Most of the universities are pretty, pretty clear with this um, type of expenses. And um, then also I like to include all the um, uh, expenses that you will have to, to do before you even apply to a university your student visa, your GRE, the GMAT, uh, if you have to take an English language test. So um, I apologize, uh, I apologize because my uh, spreadsheet is set up with Spain 
configuration. So it um, states uh, dot instead of comma and comma instead of dot, but hopefully you will understand the point of um, having this, um, this table, um, this is spreadsheet here. So uh, for example, I have, I have used this and I have um, included some information of the Master in International Agriculture of Oklahoma State University. So can you see this page, uh, Oklahoma State University webpage? Yes? No? Um, let me share again. Okay. Hopefully you can see it now. Yes, okay. Um, so for example, all of you, every university um, will give you information like this one. How much are you going to pay um, of tuition, included fees? Uh, there are other types of um, expenses that they will also include on these little um, tables. For example, housings and meals, books and supplies, um, etc. So for example, you as international students usually are going to, to use this, um, this information, international students without assistantships. So this will be the, the cost of, of attendance, um, a total of uh, 30,000, um, and a little bit more, books, tuition, supplies, etc. So all you have to do is um, copy paste this information into your um, spreadsheet and you will have the information here. So I only use the, the tuition here, I include the rooms and supplies here, the housing and meals, the health and insurance, uh, the miscellaneous, and then this cost, I, uh, I already know this cost because as an Education USA advisor, I'm very familiar with all the costs that you guys are going to have to pay um, before applying to a program. And that's the way like, you can approach to a, your Education USA advisor and start completing um, the uh, spreadsheet. So basically, we have also contacted the university to see if there are scholarships, grants, and fellowships available, and they uh, replied us. Don't be afraid to contact the universities. They are really open to give you information about anything, admissions, financial aid opportunities, any inquiry that you might have, um, you can reach to them. So uh, we have reached to them, and they told us there is a scholarship available for this special advisee. And the annual cost of this scholarship is uh, $12,000 per year. So she, also she can work on campus and we have calculated um, how much she will um, make per year. And then the only thing that you have to do is uh, sum up, sum up the cost of attendance versus how much scholarships or financial aid are you um, able to obtain to see how much you will need to pay um, the rest. And that is an easy way that you can do this simple exercise. It might take you a while and I recommend you do this also with all the universities, but it will give you a clear idea of how much um, are you, how much money are you going to need and how much money are you going to or are you will be able to get from either uh, your self fundings like your family or your local and um, local government or from the institutions that you are trying to apply. And yeah, basically that's all the information that I have for you. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm not sure if Elvira can help me. And now we are open to questions. Vida is going to ask the questions. 
I am. So we have a couple of questions for you guys, but before going to questions, we want to thank you for all the information, important, interesting, and useful information that you shared today with us. Uh, so thank you for uh, sharing also and explaining how to do the research and sharing the website, how to uh, find the information that we need. Um, so thank you again for accepting our invitation today. We have just a couple of questions and the first one is, how common is the submission of applications for PhD and master degree without having the previous degree? Can I apply if I still have four or five classes left to finish my previous degree? Okay, so um, I think I understood that um, how common is it to, to apply for a PhD directly from your undergraduate? That's first, the first question, right? No. In the United States, it is... No, no the question is, no. okay. if you haven't finished your previous degree, for instance, wow. if you want to uh, enroll uh, in a master's degree, but you haven't finished your undergraduate degree, can you still uh, submit your application? Yes, uh, you can. I, I, I think it would depend a lot on the master's program because some master's programs um, require that the student has some professional experience in order to be um, a m more competitive candidate, but they can uh, still apply. But of course, it, they should do their research um, in this specific program uh, and look at the profile of the student that they are looking for. I don't know if Yandi or Mave want, want to add on something. <laughs> okay, thank you, Alex. Uh, we have another question here. When a PhD or master's student gets fully funded, does that include travel expenses? Uh, I will say it doesn't. Um, you can, you should be able maybe to look for additional uh, opportunities. For example, as Alex said, the opportunity fund scholarships, that, that is one of the things that the scholarship covers, the travel expenses to the U.S. once you start your program. So when you are awarded at a scholarship or some kind of financial aid, they will let you know how you can do it, how you can use it, if you can use it towards your tuition, if you can use it towards um, your living expenses, or if it's going to be for books and materials. But um, I, I will say it depends on the, on the kind of uh, award that you are, that you are getting. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can use some of this money to cover your travel expenses. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yandy. We have another question regarding the GRE. When should we take the GRE? Uh, um, that, that's a million dollar question. Um, but uh, what you need to know about taking the GRE is that it is important that you know if the universities that you are going to apply for uh, if they one, if they are requesting the GRE, because not all universities request the GRE. Um, two or second, um, if they are asking for a specific um, a score, and uh, the GRE has three sections, they are requiring a total scores, a total score or um, an independent scores um, regarding e each section. And third, uh, once you have this information, you have to um, evaluate yourself and think if you are familiarized with the, with the um, uh, test, probably you will, not, you will not need so much time to prepare to get the scores that you need. And um, if you are not familiarized with the test, you need to 
um, take into consideration that you will have to spend some time study for the test. So usually once you take the test, you will get the scores um, around 10 to 15 days after. Um, but if you are having a bad score, um, the GRE that you just took will not help you with your, um, with your uh, application. So I will say it will depend. I'm not sure if my uh, Alex or Jandy uh, think different. Yeah, I agree. I think it'll, it depends. Uh, maybe think about the time that you will spend studying. Um, some advices, they take longer to study. I've had advices who probably take more than a year to study because maybe their field of study or their program, they, they are interested. As Mabel mentioned, they, they ask for a high score, so they have to study to get that score. Maybe take into consideration that you might have to take the test twice. So have uh, take take in, take in mind that uh, maybe to have enough time to to make it maybe twice before your deadline. So um, yeah, for example, I think um, a lot of the advices that we're probably advising now they are taking the test now or they have taken the test by now if they are planning to send an application this year. But these advices, they have been studying for a long time or maybe since the beginning of this year. So yeah, just there, there are things, there are many things to take into consideration. Your deadlines, also your budget. Um, if you are taking a, a prep course, um, if you have to make travel arrangements, um, COVID-19, uh, a lot of the schools now, they have gone test optional because of this uh, situation that everyone's facing. So yeah, it, I think it, there, there are many things to take into consideration. Thank you. Another question is regarding GPA. What will be the standard, if there is a standard GPA required for asking for a scholarship? Well, <laughs> uh, I don't think there's an, a standard GPA, but um, what you could see in many of these um, websites in their, um, according to their trends, the, the, the types of students that uh, get accepted to these institutions tend to maybe have uh, a GPA of 3.8 or higher. But of course, the higher the GPA, the more competitive you will be to get those um, super scholarships or those fellowships or those assistantships. But it's not only the GPA that matters here when it comes to um, from getting admitted to receiving funding, it, it's a uh, it's, it's a whole lot of factors that they t that the admissions committees take into into account. Um, of course, on one on one side is the GPA and maybe your scores of the standardized testing, but on the other is your fit with the institution and, and with the program. If your interests are aligned with what um, with maybe well, when it comes to research, of course, I'm talking about here. Um, if you're at applying to a PhD, if, if, if your research uh, aligns with, um, with what the professor is asking for, and also um, when it comes to, to master's program, if your profile is also the, the, the type of, um, I don't know how to say it, like the, the type of uh, candidate that they want, um, but it, it will be shown in your essays, in your letters of recommendation, your experience, your curriculum, your resume, all of those things. So it's not just about the GPA, but um, I don't know if one of my colleagues wants to um, add on to, to that. Yeah, I just want to add that it also depends on the scholarship that you might be interested, for example. For exa I can give you an example. In Mexico, you know, we briefly talk about the Fulbright scholarships. In Mexico, the Fulbright program, they require a minimum, minimum promedio, GPA. So it's, it's nine. 
eh, nueve. So, uh, in order to be a candidate to apply for the Fulbright Scholarship in Mexico, you have to uh, get a, a, that GPA and, and a whole lot of other things as well as, as Alex say. But uh, at least for that scholarship, you have to get nine because that's one of the requirements. Also for the Opportunity Fund scholarships in Mexico, you need to have a nine also, un, un nueve de promedio, in order to be a good ca a candidate and in order to apply to the scholarship. So um, you should do your research uh, if you are uh, applying to certain kind of fundings that are directly from private institutions or from the government from your country because they might require to have a minimum um, GPA, un promedio mínimo. Thank you. And we have uh, just one more question. As an international student, can I get a job in a private company instead of on-campus employment? Um, yes, you can, but no while you are, you are um, studying. If you are studying, uh, you're your visa status will allow you only to work 20 hours uh, per week on campus as an international student. So after you complete your, uh, either your master's or your PhD program, you, you might apply to, um, to other types of uh, growth opportunities and you can apply either depending on, on your visa to an OPT, optional practical training, or an academic training, an AT. And that will allows you to work, to, to work. It's not really, you are not really working because you are not going to need a, a, a visa um, to work, but this special, um, this special um, program allows international students to get uh, practical training in their field of study outside on campus, but only after they complete their program. Thank you, Mabel. And uh, just for your information, if you have any additional questions, please reach to your um, advisors in your country. We are going to uh, share with you how you can find your advising center. Uh, Education USA advisors are well prepared, well informed to answer all your questions, so please reach out to them. And thank you, Jan, the Alex, Mabel, for all the information. Okay, so, um, some of our coming events are posted here. The, the most important one, perhaps for this month, is the educational uh, virtual fair. Education USA virtual fair will be. It will be on September the 19th, and you have the link to register. There you will have the opportunity to talk with uh, more than 100 universities in the U.S. University representatives that can answer some of these questions you had. As you notice, the most common word was depends. It depends, and that is correct. That's why you have to do your research carefully. And participating in our events will, have, will help you answer many of the questions you have regarding your studies. Uh, thank you very much for accepting to be with us today. And don't forget to contact your Education USA advisor uh, in your country. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you again uh, to our presenters and to the advisors that are also working in the background. And uh, for everyone that is joining us today, uh, again, the website is in your screen, educationusa.state.gov, and we just share the link directly to find your advising center. Thank you again, and see you soon.